Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Comic Penciling. Uh, you're looking at the final result of the panel I'll be working on today. Um, today's all about composition, uh, so let's get into it. So, what I'm working on is the uh, third page of my personal project, Star Circuit, uh, which now I'm kind of moving away from. If you watched the last episode, I explained I'm just out of uh, not necessarily inspiration for it, but I think I'm going to go a different direction and one that I care um, more about, I think. Uh, but that being said, we're working on the line art. Um, I know the channel is called Comic Penciling, and uh, recently I've been working on the computers. And uh, with Photoshop, it's all the same thing. It, it becomes just line art, which is all, uh, as far as I'm concerned, Comic Penciling. Um, uh, I know it's different from using actual pencils, but uh, it's, it's all the line art, it's all the parts that you try to figure out as you're starting to begin uh, to tell your story with, with comics, so it's uh, it's the tentative part uh, of the process, so that's what I like about it, and that's what the channel's all about, so with this we're beginning uh, again, on nearing the end of this kind of section of test pages that you've kind of followed me through the whole time. And um, so I'm going to explain uh, some of the standards of composition. And uh, there's a lot of things that I've learned and a lot of little tips that I've figured out over the years, but mainly I, I'm like any other uh, artist. I'm following some of what the old masters have done, a lot of the old animators, a lot of the old storyboard um, artists. Uh, and uh, some of the, the current ones too. So there's a lot of, if you look at any popular or you know professional artist these days, uh, you look at the best ones out there, you're gonna, you're gonna find good compositions. So uh, my best advice to you if you wanna work on your composition is to do uh, master studies and just work on trying to figure out uh, what the artist was trying to do, like, um, you know, figure out their focus for whatever piece you're looking at. It doesn't have to be comics. I know you're watching a comic channel, and it's probably why you're watching it because you love comics, as I do. But uh, if you look at any piece of art, painting or otherwise, you'll see composition. And uh, essentially, um, just want to explain my my thought process on it. Uh, so, uh, I've done a few, you know, studies myself and through uh, studies of uh, normal paintings and a lot of comic art, because comic has uh, almost another level of composition where uh, there's composition of the page itself, where the panels are arranged in a certain way that it looks good and flows, and then on another level there's the, the panels, and all the panels are individually framed and shot um, almost like a movie um, you could think of it that way it's not really that way because you have to think about um, other things that movie and cinematics don't have to think about because um, they have motion um, that they can use and we don't have that so we've kind of got to think about it a little bit uh, in a different way um, but yeah I looked there I looked at comics and also I was doing a lot of storyboarding at one point and I was studying a lot of different movies and different comics uh, specifically for shot design and shot design um, in that case is all about storytelling because you can compose a shot just for aesthetics and just for figuring out where uh, things look the best uh, but in our case it's more for storytelling purposes and um, where you have things arranged in the panel, if they're lower on the frame, if they're higher on the frame, um, if they're bigger on the frame, or if they're smaller on the frame, they're all gonna mean something. And even if you don't know anything about the story, um, if you arrange things in a certain way and um, use, uh, for instance, if you have your uh, main character big on the screen like I do, they're gonna be the focus, one. And 
two, it's a low angle shot, like on mine, it's like a worm's eye view. And for that, it's gonna seem more heroic, more um, bold. It's gonna be a, uh, a cooler shot, but on top of that, it's just gonna have a, uh, I think a more heroic effect. Um, it's, it's bigger on the page and it's more on the frame as far as um, it's not tilted over, it's very stable, so it's gonna seem like a solid, uh, kind of a heroic, um, I know it's just a bike and a guy riding a bike, but it's uh, it's gonna come off like a uh, very stable and very strong. So um, I'm using uh, the low angle shot to give this effect. Um, so as you're looking at your uh, your own master studies, that you go find your favorite artist, go find your favorite masters. And look at them you'll see all these different things um, and try to notice uh, what why things look so either strong or weak or uh, what feeling you have so from that you can kind of um, uh, pull apart or uh, what word am I thinking of essentially dissect there we go uh, dissect the shot and pull different pieces and uh, this is where the saying comes um, from where good artists will steal from other artists as long as you're not um, not directly copying and not making it your own as long as you're not doing that uh, as long as you're changing it a little bit you're gonna just be using the uh, techniques of the masters and and the people that came before you and that's perfectly fine so uh, go do the master studies as far as what I'm working on here, uh, you can see as I work on the blue line, a lot of things come to life, and uh, I'm not really changing anything from the blue line because I already established my uh, my composition. So you can even just follow the blue and see what I'm doing. Uh, so we've already talked about essentially that I put my main character big on the shot, the low angle and um, creates this dynamic shot and makes my guy like the hero of the page and um, aside from that the perspective is helping that a lot and since the low angle is um, really giving everything this um, unique effect where things uh, closer to it are really big and the things far away are um, more far away which means it's a um, the focal length on the camera if those if this was a real camera it would be very small let's say it's like a 20 um 20 or 30 i'd say millimeter and this is just uh and uh, exaggerating the effect of the camera that things in the beginning things up close are really up close and things far away uh, tend to be way smaller and that all goes into the perspective and you can see my perspective lines in here um, this shot is composed pretty much on this grid and the best part about perspective is that it naturally gives you um, cool focus and it will give you a good focal point uh, just by doing good perspective you're going to end up with a decent composition anyway um, not always but if using other things like uh, the next point is rule of thirds or the golden rule or not the golden rule that's like a saying like a golden ratio if you ever heard these terms in film class or wherever uh, art classes it's all about this kind of um, I think it's a formula but it's really this this spatial rule um, in nature it's found in everything um, a lot of things in nature, a lot of things uh, all over the place follow this rule of thirds where there's a certain number and they break it down into shapes through well, tri trigonometry or something. Either way, as an artist, all you need to know is things look awesome when they're broken down into thirds rather than in two or four. Um, but for some reason, hitting that third mark with... Um, your focal points will really help so in this shot if you break my frame from left to right into th three pieces 
Uh, the space is in between chunk one and two, so the space in between or the line that divides the first part on the left and the middle part, that's going to be a good part to put something, uh, you know, strong in your frame. So my guy is in the, between the middle and, and the right, and it's right in that line of the thirds. Um, and you can go, you know, just look up golden rule or ratio and you'll see endless things on people breaking down logos, breaking down paintings, breaking down all this stuff in life to the to the rule of thirds. It's kind of like, I don't know, the, the biggest discovery in, in art almost. Um, it's almost like a cheat uh, to make things look cool doesn't always do it but if you combine that with all the other things that I'm talking about everything adds up just like when you're rendering and you're coming up with uh, how to render a proper cylinder or just render anything realistically if you add in all the steps that you know how to how to render a cylinder if you add in the rounding effect uh, around the cylindrical shape that you know if you add in that shading for the the shadow on the sphere it's, or on the cylinder itself if you add a cast shadow if you add a little bit of a sliver of bounce light on the on the shadow side and then if you add like a strong highlight and add material and texture on it add all those things on and they're gonna compile into something that looks realistic and it's just same what works the same way with composition as you add a bunch of things together and all these different little bit of rules, perspective, um, you add the rule of thirds and you add um, adding a cool shot or a dynamic angle that, you know, uh, an exaggerated focal length from your shot, your camera. Um, if you add all these things together, you're gonna come up with something good. Uh, you don't always have to use rule of thirds because there's also, um, symmetry like um, Wes Anderson will do that a lot in his movies uh, go look at his stuff and you'll just get examples upon examples um, he does it a whole lot and it's a cool effect because there's not many things in nature that um, do symmetry uh, it's kind of the opposite of rule of thirds it's like with the rule of thirds it's so natural and so embedded in everything you see every day it becomes cool and natural on the other hand sim symmetry doesn't look automatically as cool but it's so odd looking that um, you have to look twice at things that are perfectly symmetrical I mean with the exception with the exception of like a face because that's faces are pretty symmetrical and we see them a lot in everyday life and anything that's man-made tends to be symmetrical but aside from that there's not going to be many things that are symmetrical, and that's why Wes Anderson's movies look so weird and indie, because they're just shot um, with this peculiar sym symmetry in mind. So, um, as you go in there and do your master studies, look for symmetry as well, as well as rule of thirds and um, all these little things in composition, and try to break them down. You know, write them down. You can either put them in Photoshop and just trace over them and see where things line up. I know I did. Um, I'm a really big fan of Sid Mead. I don't know if you know Sid Mead. He did uh, a lot. Of, he's a futurist kind of designer. He's done so much stuff, um, namely uh, Blade Runner. It's awesome. It's an awesome movie. And then he's done a million other things too, but he's just one of the modern masters. Um, and I recently did some of his studies and you're just like, as you're going through, you're realizing it slowly, but surely you're like every little detail in one of his um, drawings or, or layouts or whatever he's working on. If you do these studies, you realize slowly these masters have every detail is there for a reason. They're not even, um, letting one little piece go to waste you know if a knob or a computer screen or a motorbike is in a certain area it's there for a reason and you can see why they put things in certain places for a reason and with him I just noticed in one of his drawings that 
man, everything was on like uh, either a third or it was ready is divided in four equal parts, like almost exactly. And you're like, oh, this is why it looks so clean. And he's measured things out. There's a science to it, and that's why it looks so like kind of dynamic um, and unusual in some ways. Uh, so that's what you need to do for yourself. Um, and look at your favorite artist because anytime you're engaged with things you really enjoy you're, it's not going to seem like work you're going to be like oh man I love just watching man I love watching Tron or, you know or whatever uh, so I'm going to watch some of you know the concept artists work on it like Sid Mead I think he worked on some of the bikes <clears throat> so I'm going to move on to the next another aspect of uh, composition which is uh, something that it really comes down to contrast and you almost can tie this to the rule of thirds because the rule of thirds can be tied to almost anything and this is level of detail so if you have a density of detail somewhere um, say one object is super well rendered and textured and detailed up that's going to be drawing the viewer's eye uh, really quickly and it's gonna go there especially in line art which is what we're doing here and which is something that I focus on um, level of detail almost directly translates to <clears throat> contrast because you're working on a white page and if you're not adding value the more lines you add the more detail you add means there's gonna be a clump of more black which is an essentially adding detail uh, a quick trick to figure out your composition as you're going along in the beginning is to blur your eye and if you squint your eyes and blur your eye and look back at what you're working on you can just kind of see a more general um, setup of what you've got going on in your composition and if it looks good blurred it means it most likely is working um, when it's not blurred and it's a trick because we tend to be like a, a slave to the details and we get so tied up to what we're doing that you forget um, not that you forget but your your body and your eyes start being so used to the way you're seeing it you forget to look at it in different ways um, so blur your eyes Forget about the details and as you're laying things out with your blue line or whenever you're designing something a, a, a shot blow your eyes will help and see if it works on that level on a simplified level um, so with line art the density of something is going to be a huge deal it's going to add the value or seemingly the value because there's it's all black and white as far as line art goes but it's seemingly going to add the value that you're looking for um, and you're going to end up with a, um, a more focused shot because the areas that have the most contrast and most detail in this case my rider in the in the foreground is going to have the most detail it's, your eyes are going to go there and that leads me to say anything in the background try to put in less detail um, I know there's a lot of I don't know you can talk about a lot of different faults other artists have or not faults but people get lazy when they do art sometimes I mean I do it constantly I'm like I'm super sloppy sometimes and I try not to be but that being said you can use this to your advantage because if you work on a lot of the foreground elements um, when you're polishing up things and you're working on your work uh, your art do the things in the foreground first and you'll end up any more detail there as you go along you get tired in the night or if you're working late into the night or in the morning or whatever uh, you can start to get lazy with the background and that's gonna pretty much add to your your composition because um, things in the background should get less detail and it's gonna look like you have an atmospheric perspective which is things get hazed out in the distance you don't get to see the, the value and when you're working with line art um, that translates to less lines uh, so as you're working in the background add more silhouettes more just contour lines less detail less texture and, and that's a like a 
trial and error thing. Got it gives. Um, takes a lot of practice essentially to get it just right. You know, I'm obviously still working on it myself, and I'm you know we're all growing here, so just work on it. Look at your masters, see how much detail they put in there. Copy it if you want. Do a copy study. But uh, when you're studying, make sure you don't just copy. Make sure you do a copy. Maybe put another um, image of another master study on Photoshop. Trace over it. Write notes. Um, I write notes just to remember, um, to kind of force my brain to remember something very important. So if something's that important, I'll write it down, help my brain remember it. Uh, because art is half science. If you can have the dedication and the um, discipline to learn the science behind art then your brain is free to do the art part and that's essentially where every growing artist goes wrong um, it's not really wrong it's just where the struggle comes from because you have to do the hard ass work <laughs> you have to go to school you have to study all the time, you have to learn anatomy, you have to do the boring shit, and when you're done, then your mind won't um, be focusing on on these on these details, and it'll be free to roam around and make these cool effects, and um, be more focused on the story. So, study up, watch the masters, look for good compositions, and just work on projects you know take what you've learned in your master studies and apply it to things you know whether it be your comics and uh your stories or just illustrations if you guys want just you know you can comment you know give me a link to your stuff i'll check it out if you want me to check it out um and you know check out my website too we can always talk uh compare art but just want to thank anybody who's subscribed anybody's liked and come back next time more videos Thanks a lot, guys. Bye.